Hey y'all, my name is Yvette and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be reviewing two non-fiction books. I read both of these books back to back on audiobook and they were narrated by the same person, uh, Alison Johnson, who is a fantastic narrator. And both of these books cover race and specifically different aspects of anti-black racism. So it made sense to talk about them at the same time. So the first book was They Were Her Property, White Women as Slave Owners in the American South by Stephanie E. Jones Rogers. This is a non-fiction book about what the title says, white women as slave owners in the South. And this book covers the time period of when slavery was alive and well and thriving in the South to the Civil War and a little bit after that. I thought this book was incredible, automatic five stars. It was so well researched and well put together and very accessible to someone who doesn't normally read history and nonfiction books. It challenges some of the common ideas we have about white women as slave owners and provides all the necessary evidence and commentary to back those ideas up unequivocally. So for example, some of these ideas were that white women weren't as bad as white men when it came to slavery or they didn't understand the full impact of slavery because they weren't as exposed to it or they were thought to be more or less benevolent to the people they owned and didn't really have a say in whether slavery was a thing or not or how the men that they were attached to treated their slaves and all of these ideas are false it was quite the opposite for many white women owning slaves was a way of securing independent financial stability so they were wives who owned slaves separately from their husband to the point where their husband could not legally interfere in the owning, selling, or treatment of those slaves. And this was because if the husband made some bad business decisions and he lost everything, the wife would still be okay because she'd have her wealth in her property and the people she enslaved. Many white women were gifted slaves early on in life, in particular female slaves, as sort of a nesting egg. So as time went on, the slaves value would increase as they produced more slaves. And in this way, these women were able to obtain a certain level of freedom and wealth despite the constraints of their gender. And besides just owning slaves, they were also active participants in the slave markets and their treatment of their slaves varied from individual to individual, some committing the worst atrocities of the time. And even those who treated their slaves like quote unquote well, they did it to protect their investments, not because they thought it was the right thing to do. And during and after the Civil War, they did everything they could to keep hold of their property because that's where their wealth was. For some, that was where all of their money was. One of the reasons why I rated this book five stars is that even though it's a history book, it still felt very relevant to today. After the 2016 election, I remember seeing a bunch of white women talking about how surprised they were that other white women would vote for Trump. And at the time, I didn't have the words to express why I wasn't surprised, but this book gives the historical context of white women upholding white supremacy. White supremacy could not exist if it wasn't for white women supporting and actively engaging in white supremacy, and they continue to do it because it benefits them. Slavery could not have sustained itself without white women owning slaves, and that is true for white supremacy in all the forms it comes in. I still see things like Free Ivanka and Free Melania framing these women as victims as if they don't have a choice in supporting Trump, as if they don't have a vested interest in keeping him in power. Just as white women who owned slaves were thought of as passive participants in slavery who didn't really have a say in the matter instead of them actively ensuring that this system continued. I'm not sure if I'm explaining myself well enough, but the connection I'm trying to make is that there is this assumed fragility and vulnerability when it comes to white women and their role in white supremacy. And it's an entirely false narrative and I saw that parallel when I was reading this. Content warnings for just about everything you would expect for a book about slavery. Uh, discussions of torture, rape, family separation, murder, and racism. Also, the n-word is used in this book during the accounts of the formerly enslaved and slaved owners. Both the author and the narrator is black, and in the introduction, the author explains why she decided to include that word. The next book I'll be reviewing in this video is Fearing the Black Body, The Racial Origins of Fat Phobia by Sabrina Strings. This is another nonfiction book about what the title says, The Racist Origins of Fat Phobia. It covers a time period beginning in the Renaissance, up to and through the 1990s and it focuses on the evolution of the aesthetic ideals assigned to women's bodies and how the current thin ideal is rooted in anti-black racism. I ended up rating this book a four to five stars so still a high rating but a different kind of high rating than they were her property. 
Just like that book, this one was incredibly well researched and all the information was presented in a way that made sense. Even though the subject matter in this book has a much wider scope, I was never confused or felt like this book was trying to do too much. Like it was easy to follow and all around a solid read on an important and relevant subject. However, I also found this book a lot harder to pay attention to. It was drier and maybe not as accessible to someone who doesn't normally read history nonfiction books. Some parts were a real struggle to get through, but in the end, I'm glad I read this. I learned a lot and I think my problems with this book were much more of a me thing, so take that with a grain of salt because I still highly recommend this book. So this book is all about how fat phobia isn't about health at all. It is a tool that has been intentionally crafted to enforce sex, race, and class hierarchies and I was thoroughly disgusted by all the men in this book and their contributions to this idea of fat phobia. So we start in the Renaissance where all the great artists and thinkers of the time debated on what constituted beauty. It came down to proportions and it was better if you were more voluptuous than not. And at the time, black women were actually thought of to have very beautiful bodies, but that changed as slavery started to spread. Then it became more popular. It was associated with class and discipline and intelligence, while fatness was associated with overindulgence and low intelligence. And to support these ideas, race scientists started comparing white bodies and black bodies. And I'm gonna paraphrase here. They compared white bodies with the grotesque black body that was natural to black people for many reasons, among them being that there was little they loved more than eating and indulging, which is absolutely horrendously disgusting. And thus fat phobia became another way to maybe another aspect of rationalizing slavery. The theories that race scientists came up with were wildly inaccurate and illogical and a lot of times they contradicted themselves. Like how are you gonna say that black people overindulged when white people invaded half of the world for sugar, which of course then they overindulged in to the point where enough people gained enough weight that it became a major public health concern. That then led to eugenics and I did not know that Kellogg's of Kellogg's cereal was a huge eugenicist but he was. And these ideas became so deeply ingrained into our culture. Like BMI is racist and it's biased against black people and other people of color. And medical professionals will push you to lose weight when your health and quality of life is not determined by how fat you are. This book tracks fat phobia through time in a way that makes the origins of fat phobia undeniably and obviously racist. And that is what this book sets out to do and it does it well and that's why I rated this book four stars despite the reading experience not being to my personal taste. Content warnings for racism, slavery, mentions of sexual assault, involuntary examination, purging, and a person starving themselves. So those are my reviews for They Were Her Property and Fearing the Black Body. If you've read these books, come tell me what you thought about them in the comments below. I hope y'all enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.